Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to a different topic. Uh, and we're still going to use model based methods. So we're still assuming a model. But uh, in this case, we're going to use unit level models, OK, as opposed to area level models. And um, we will start by presenting unit level models, say, for simple uh, averages like means of income and so on. And I know that's not quite what you want to do, but by doing this, that will uh, lay the foundations in, in, uh, for moving on to what we call poverty mapping methods, where uh, there are methods that you can use in order to output uh, to, to estimate poverty related indicators, for example. OK, so. Uh, the same what I described before with area level models holds here for unit level models. So we have a, a data set. We use the data set to train a model and then we use the model parameters in order to predict uh, for those units that we don't observe. And by doing that, then we can construct an estimator or a predictor of what we're trying to estimate. That might be a mean, uh, an, an average. Uh, um, uh, it can be a headcount ratio. It can be a, a more complex things like a zinc coefficient and so on. OK. But let's go through the basics first. OK, so as I said, model based methods uh, are, are classified as indirect methods. And why they are indirect? Because effectively you're borrowing data, you're using data not only from your area of interest, but also from other areas. Remember that the BLAP and the eBLAP, the best linear and bias predictor, and the empirical best linear and bias predictor, are this combination between the direct and the, the synthetic, right? So on the one side you have the direct estimates, on the other side you have the XI beta hat, and then we use this gamma I weight and one minus gamma I to uh, borrow, uh, to, to, to combine the two. So on the left-hand side, you have a direct estimator and on the, on, on the, on the, on the left-hand side, on, on the, on the left-hand side, you have the direct estimator and on the right-hand side, uh, you have a regression synthetic estimator that uses the data from all areas. Okay. Now, the second thing is that model-based estimators account for between area variability that is not fully explained by the available auxiliary variables. So remember that there is this term that I denoted by UI, which is called the random effect, and that random effect capsules what uh, a between area variability uh, is, uh, is remains after we control for a set of explanatory variables, the axis. OK, so that is done by the using the use of random effects. So in the previous section, we focused on area level models. In this section, we consider unit level models. And here now we're going to model our data by using, a, in the simplest case, a two level structure where households are nested within areas. OK, so we have a two level hierarchical structure where uh, households in Colombia are nested within municipalities in Colombia. OK, that's the, the simplest possible two level structure we are going to use, and that's what we're assuming here. So as in the case of area level models, um, the, in, the, in the case of unit level models, the most popular unit level model is what is called the nested error regression model. And this was proposed by Patisse, Harter and Fuller in 1988. So I'm giving you uh, the reference. This is a seminal paper uh, uh, and um, uh, it was published in the Journal of the American Statistical Association. What this model is doing, right? And here you, you have to be uh, a bit careful in order to understand what the difference from the area level model is the model will link the values of the target variable, which I denote here by YIJ. So YIJ in this case, say if you're interested in monetary poverty, uh, will be say an income measure for household J, unit J, in, let's assume that in our case, in the survey data set, we have a measure of uh, our units are households, in area I, so that's municipality I. And we're going to link, we're going to use a model to link the 
outcome, uh, the response variable, the income variable, to a set of auxiliary variables. Okay. So now you can contrast that to the Fay Heriot model, the area level model. Remember that with the Fay Heriot model that we saw in section two, I apologize, this would be section two, not section three. Okay. We link the direct estimates at the area level with auxiliary variables. Okay. So uh, in the area level model, the left hand side, the response variable, if you want to call it like that, is a direct estimate at the area level, whereas with the unit level model, the left hand side is just as in any kind of standard statistical model uh, is a response variable that is defined for household A and area uh, municipality I. OK, so you will be more familiar with this type of models, I expect, if you have an econometrics background or a statistics background. Uh, or any other quantitative background, this kind of models that we're going to cover here, you will be more familiar with compared to the case of area level models where the response variable was uh, a, a direct estimate. OK, to start with, in this section, we're going to focus on estimating small area means, and that's important. OK, we're estimating just a small area mean because it's easier to illustrate the method using uh, for small area means, but then we're going to extend these uh, methods in order to uh, estimate more general parameters uh, that are relevant to small area estimation of poverty indicators. Now, why we make this distinction is because depending on what your target parameter is, that will also determine the data sources that you need access to for estimation purposes. In other words, if in Colombia you were just interested in estimating the average equivalized income, that would have been a fairly straightforward exercise. If you are interested in obtaining estimates of uh, various poverty indicators, for example, a poverty gap, a poverty severity, and so on, then you will need access to data sources that are a bit more difficult to, to have access to, but if you are working within an official statistics framework and within a national statistical institute, hopefully this uh, data sources will be available to you. But I want to make this distinction because I want you to be aware of that. For estimating simple statistics like small area means, uh, we need a lot less uh, information that can be defined at the area level compared to estimating more general parameters um, like uh, poverty gaps, poverty severities and so on. OK, let's look into the Batiste Carter and Fuller model. OK, now the, the Batiste Carter and Fuller model also relies on uh, a, a, a mixed effects or a random effects model. Right. So here is the model. What the model says is that your YIJ, so your income in a municipality I and uh, sorry, in municipality I and household J is equal to a set of covariates xij times a set of regression coefficients associated with each one of these covariates beta plus a random effect for municipality i the random effect in these models is specified at the target level of a geographical area or the target domain if your domains are a bit more complex, so it may be um, a domain that combines a uh, municipality with certain demographic or ethnic groups, for example. The important thing is that the random effect is specified at the level of the domain plus a unit level error term. And we assume that we have in the population M municipalities. So in your case, this might be 1000 or 1100 municipalities and we have NI households. So as I said, the beta is the uh, vector regression coefficients. The UI is the random area effect. That random area effect is very important in smaller estimation because what it represents, it represents what remains unexplained, how is how much is the unexplained between area variability in Y, I, J after controlling for the observables, so after controlling for the axis, and 
a, a unit level error term, which again, I apologize here, I have to correct this one. This would be epsilon here, not E, but epsilon, so that it's consistent with my notation here. Okay, so uh, don't get confused by this uh, uh, lack of precision in the notation here, so have picked that up. That's the unit level error term. What else do you need for small area estimation? In addition to the survey data that you can use in order to estimate this model, you need also the population, the area population means of the X of the X's. Okay, so the, we call them as X bar I. And we assume that this also must be known for small area estimation. Okay. And the two error terms are assumed to be distributed uh, according to distribution, which will then will specify to be a normal distribution uh, with mean zero and between uh, the between area variance component denoted by sigma squared u and between uh, uh, between unit within area variance component denoted by sigma squared epsilon. Okay, so effectively you need uh, survey data, unit level survey data, household level survey data on y's and x's that you can use in order to estimate your model. And you also need for small area prediction, you also need the, uh, the uh, 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 area averages or area proportions depending on the variable that you define, uh, the variable that you're using in the population. OK, and these axes are exactly the same axes as the ones you use in order to fit your model. OK. So this is the uh, the, the, the basis of uh, the Batiste, Harter and Fuller model. And let's look, uh, uh, let's look into the BLAP, the best linear and bias predictor under the Batiste, Harter and Fuller model. So if you are interested in estimating the population area mean, which we denote here by theta i, that's my population mean in area i, in municipality i, okay? You can see that as uh, decomposing that into the sum of two components. A sum, first of all, is the sum of all the, say, income values for units in the sample in area i, okay? So what the first part of that says is that I'm going to use all the income values from sample units in area I in municipality I. And what else you need? You need also a second bit, the income values of households in area I that are not part of the sample. You don't observe them. Okay, so you have a sum of two parts. The first bit you observe because you have data from the survey in each municipality. The second data you don't the second the second part you don't observe because these are what is in the rest of the of the of the population that is not observed in your sample, and hence you are missing these yij values. Okay, so the first part is known from the survey data. The second part is unknown, and what we are going to do is because the second part is unknown, we are going to predict these values under a model. And in this case, we're going to use the model that is specified by the Batiste, Harter and Fuller model. And obviously, this will give you a total. What you need to do, of course, is uh, you have to, if, you, if you're interested in the mean, you have to divide by the population sizes in that area. So, as I said, the second part is unknown here. Okay, so the best linear and bias predictor is obtained by fitting the model to the sample data and using the model estimates uh, in order to predict, to estimate that part of, this, of the population that is not observed in your sampling. So you see now that in the second equation, I have replaced theta i by theta hat i blab. The first part remains the same, and the second part has been replaced by predicted values of income for each household in a municipality under my model, under my uh, uh, random effects model, okay? So that's how model-based estimation happens, right? I don't observe something. I have a model that I assume that is the model that has generated my data, and I'm going to use that model in order to predict the part of the population that I don't observe. 
Okay, so for the blob, we assume that uh, the sigma squared u and sigma squared e epsilon are known. Okay, remember that uh, the I uh, have these parameters here: sigma squared u and sigma squared t. Okay, that need to be estimated. But for the best linear and bias predictor, I'm going to assume for the one moment that these are known. Okay. The other thing that you can assume here is that the um, sample size ni in municipality i relative to the population is, is close to zero. So basically you observe only a very small part of the uh, municipality compared to the population of that municipality. That goes back to the comment that Jose made that some of the municipalities may, may have very small sample sizes. Okay, and we what we by assuming that what we do is we replace the sample and non-sample parts of the blob with a sum over the entire population. So instead of effectively using these values here, uh, if the sample size is very small, then we replace the entire uh, expression by predicted values for the entire population. These are predicted values under the model. OK, so this is how it looks like. OK, so the theta hat i blob is approximately equal to one over the population size summation from i equals to one so one up to the number of households in the population in that area in that municipality and then we use predictions under the model and under the model my predictions are nothing more than xix beta hat plus this expression here and this expression here is nothing more than my random effect ui okay and if you do a bit of algebra okay you will see that this can be written as a again a combination of two parts one is based on um, the regression synthetic estimator so x i bar remember this x i bar are the population means at the area level of the covariates times beta hat and also on another part that again will look familiar to you which is basically yi bar plus xi bar that's the population mean of covariates in a, of the covariates in municipality i minus x small i bar which is a sample equivalent times beta hat and again we need to use uh, weights gamma i and one minus gamma i okay and if you develop that a bit more effectively this no, is nothing more than taking the population averages of the axis in municipality i multiplying them by beta hat and adding a predicted random effect or adding a random effect that we haven't predicted yet because we assume that sigma squared u and sigma squared t are known in this case okay so you see that in order to estimate the uh, small area means in area I, I don't need to use uh, population microdata. I don't need to know the population values of X's for all households in the population. I just need to have the uh, aggregated covariates at the municipality level. And then I'm ready to do small area prediction. OK, so again, as in the case of the Faye Harriot model, we move from the blab to the e blab. Okay. Um, my, I will move to the e blab in one moment. Just before I move to the e blab, I just need to define this gamma i, just to give you a bit more information about the gamma i. You remember the gamma i is the weight that I give to the different the two different parts of the blab, and the gamma i looks very similar to the case of the. Uh, fair heritage model. So I take the between area variability sigma squared u divided by sigma squared u plus sigma squared e epsilon divided by ni, where ni is the sample size in municipality in area i. So if it happens that your uh, population uh, x bar i and the sample x bar i are equal to zero, to is are equal, then the estimator has exactly the same form as the estimator under the fair heritage model. OK, if Ni is small, if your sample size in area I is small, then gamma I will tend to zero and the blob for this uh, um, 
for this, um, in this case, we'll tend to the synthetic estimator. So if your sample size is very small, right, then you will give more weight to the uh, second part, the synthetic estimator. Or if uh, if sigma squared u is large, okay, compared to the second part, which is sigma squared epsilon over ni, then the blap will tend to give more weight to the regression uh, regression uh, to the regression estimator. So the first part here, okay. And for out of sample areas, you can get a predicted uh, value for the parameter of interest. In this case, this is the mean in area i which is equal to x bar i times beta hat, okay? So again, you use the uh, aggregates of the axis uh, to multiply it by the estimated regression coefficients, and that will give you a predicted value of theta i. Um, what happens with the e blap? Obviously, sigma squared u and sigma squared e are not known. Remember that under the Fehrerios model, sigma squared epsilon was assumed known because I, I was I, I had only one observation per area and I couldn't estimate both variance components. Whereas under the Batiste Carter and Fuller model, both variance components are unknown and can be estimated using unit level data. Okay. So uh, there are different estimators of sigma uh, squared epsilon and sigma squared u. And uh, the paper by Batiste and et al uh, gives you different uh, estimators. Uh, and uh, once you have estimated uh, uh, the uh, variance components and you can plug the estimated values into the blap and you will get uh, an, uh, 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 the theta hat i that is now the empirical best linear unbiased predictor. Okay, so the predicted values of y will be under uh, the uh, estimated by using the estimated variance components. Okay, so I think it's a good time, I think, to stop here uh, because um, I don't want to start uh, talking about mean squared error and bootstraps and so on. Uh, but uh, what I have effectively started doing today is I have started uh, defining models that can be used with unit level data where unit level data is available. And I believe that's the case in Dane. For this first part, we use a, a simple model uh, in order to estimate a two-level model, in order to estimate uh, small area means, okay? Uh, and we, uh, in order to do that, we use a, a linear mixed effects model that is relating the, the Y values of uh, uh, a household uh, J and municipality I to a set of explanatory variables, uh, the inclusion of a random effect at the level of the geography plus a unit level error term. And, uh, the other important thing to remember here is that uh, you can construct estimators of the uh, small area uh, averages effectively by um, uh, constructing, uh, by taking the, the values of that are observed in the sample and replacing the uh, values that are uh, not observed in the sample by predicted values under the model. Okay. And what we showed here is effectively that for small area means, effectively, what the only thing that you need to know is uh, you need to know the population values, the population values uh, in every area, the population values of the covariance x in every area. And if you know that and you fit the model, then you are ready to get uh, your uh, blap estimates um, under this model. And by replacing uh, the unknown variance components with estimated variance components will lead you to the empirical best linear and bias predictor, which looks like that. Okay, so uh, that's effectively uh, where we are at the moment. And what we're going to do on Friday, and we're going to meet on Friday again at three at nine o'clock your time, we're going to continue with the unit level model. We're going to uh, talk a bit about mean square terror estimation, and uh, we have uh, analytic uh, mean square terror estimators for statistics such as the uh, parameters such as the the small area mean, uh, but also we have bootstrap uh, parametric bootstrap solution to the mean square terror uh, estimation, which are going to become more and more important as we uh, end up estimating more general parameters that are used in poverty mapping. Okay. And after we 
give a, a summary of unit level models. I'm going to summarize the advantages and so on of uh, uh, unit level models and also a few additional things to consider. Uh, the, the, then we are going to uh, move on to poverty mapping and in poverty mapping we are going to start by uh, using uh, presenting the ELL method, which is a, a popular method that has been used quite extensively by the World Bank. And then we're going to focus on the empirical best predictor approach, uh, which is the EBP method, which is one another method that uh, has been used also widely uh, in uh, in the past as well, and and currently is used in many applications. Okay, uh, so effectively we're going to go through in detail on the ELL method. And then once we cover that, uh, we are going to focus on the empirical best prediction approach. Uh, but all of these methods, again, are based on the standard unit level mixed effects model that was originally defined by the Batiste, Harter and Fuller model. So understanding the basics of the Batiste, Harter and Fuller model are really essential in order to move forward to the poverty mapping methods.